you know, there are, <clears throat> uh, uh, again, I don't even know where to start because I've been looking at this for 48 years. I don't even know where to start because there is so much to be said about how people are being manipulated and exploited in their ignorance and have no idea in the world what's going on. For instance, there's two of everything in our country. There are, there's not 50 states. There's 100 states in America, not 50. And people talk about the United States as one nation, indivisible. The United States of America is not one nation, and it is not indivisible, because America is not one nation. It is 50 different nations. Each state is a sovereign entity of its own. And consequently, you can do things in one state that you can't do in another. So we're not one nation, indivisible. No, not at all. There are 50 different nations, and each one has their own government. And then we have the founders doing that, saying that would keep tyranny from overrunning it. And now here we are 230-something years later, finally the feds are federalizing everything. Everything. Feds have come in. Now, look, at the federal government is like uh, if you buy a condo, in a building. You own your own apartment or condo in the building, but there are other people who own their condos in the building, so you have to live with other people. So therefore, you you get together and you decide who's going to be in charge of taking the trash out for everyone, who's going to be in charge of cleaning the pool for everyone. So everybody chips in a few dollars at each month uh, Yeah, the federal government is the homeowning association. Uh, Yes, that's exactly right. And therefore, but now the the people who have been appointed by the... They're in uh, your bedroom eating out of your refrigerator. That's it. Telling you what you can do, what you can't do, when in point of fact, we hired them. Amazing. Jordan Maxwell, let's talk more about the court, the robes, praying to the court. Roman civil law versus common law, what we're being converted to, and then the globalist master plan, the mutation of the human population. JordanMaxwell.com is the website. My websites are InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. The secret brotherhood that wages war against freedom controls every major organization, every ancient organization. Their gang symbols are all around us, from Starbucks coffee to the bikers wearing the Iron Cross. Symbols mean something. The Illuminati, they, they, they believe that these symbols resonate a power. They believe they bring in, that, that it channels in a spiritual force. And they do have the power. You have to ask, is it real? Well, regardless, they believe it is. Jordan Maxwell, one of the foremost experts on this subject, jordanmaxwell.com, is our guest into the next hour. Great to have him on with us. I'm on his site. I'm in uh, a section on uh, religion, hidden roots of religion. Then we're going to get into words to search. Uh, But I'm looking at the Iron Cross, the Knights Templar. Uh, I'm looking at uh, these symbols uh, also being used uh, in the United States as well. Uh, What does that symbol mean when we see the Iron Cross? Well, that's interesting. Uh, You know, it's it's used uh, everywhere, and and most people don't, you know, do not realize what the Iron Cross meant, where it comes from. It's associated with very powerful, dark, secret societies in Europe especially in Germany, and how the Vatican uh, bestows, when the Vatican bestows uh, some, uh, uh, you know, some kind of a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, some kind of an award on politicians is always the Iron Cross. The Iron Cross was used by Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler. It's used by the Knights of uh, Malta, a secret society operating within the Vatican, which also gave us, the Knights of Malta are responsible for giving to America, the CIA. CIA is a Knights of Malta operation. So the Knights of Malta, the, Knights. the Knights of Malta, you think, are more powerful than the Jesuits? Are the same oh, I, well, I think that they are working tandem with uh, the, the Jesuits. Maybe even the Jesuits are, are the brains behind Knights of Malta. It's very difficult to know, even when you're in those secret societies, it's hard to tell, you know, who the bosses well, are. Well, that's because, another uh, problem is that I've always talked about this and always had guests on about it, and, and, and then you've got other nuts out there who just make up wild claims, crazy things, and then, you know, and, and then when somebody calls you a Jesuit or someone, I'm not even Catholic, and uh, then it's kind of <laughs> hard to cover their their research when they believe in flying saucers and, 
Yeah, and, I know. And, 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 and that the Earth is the center of the universe. I mean, then here I've got you and countless others on. They'll still say I never talked about it, never discussed it. Doesn't matter how many guests a week I have on on the subject, it'll never end. Because, but, but but you're a credible researcher because what you're covering now 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 uh, the uh, the the Iron Cross is associated with Bacchus, is it not? And that's the Roman devil. Well, and it's also associated with the old Sumerian. Uh, the ancient Sumerians used the same symbol. Uh, if you uh, if you go on my website anywhere anyone listening, <clears throat> just go on my website and you will see at the top of the page a button saying research, or uh, or there's a box. If you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see a box that says general research. That's the same thing. Go to that and it will take you to a, a group of boxes and each one's filled with all kinds of different kind of research. And so the one we're on right now is called Hidden Roots of Religion. And a lot of people ask me about, well, what about this? What about that? But the three books that are on my website uh, on the home page are incredibly Tell you what, stay there. Important. Stay there. We got a break. We're going to come back and talk about Bacchus and a lot more. Stay with us. Underneath the Iron Cross on the swastika, on Jordan Maxwell's website, he has Bacchus is not prejudice. He hangs out at synagogues, too. That's the horned devil. And then um, he's got Bacchus is at home here on the monument in TBN's courtyard. <laughs> and then you've got Bacchus all over different monuments all over the world. I, I saw Bacchuses all over every major government building, the Supreme Court, you name it. Uh, and it's all done as guardians. They're always at the corners of the buildings. Uh, continue. I mean, I mean, why do you have Bacchus on this page about the Nazis, Jordan? Well, it, it's, well, it's not connected to the Nazis as such. It's just one of uh, each article. And I put three or four articles per page. Sometimes I only put two, <clears throat> depending on how long they are. Well, I know the Nazi Germans, though, did put Bacchus on a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Of course they did. Of course they did. They it, used it, 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 is he a friendly guy? Why do they like him so much? <laughs> Well, Bacchus has been, uh, he's the god of wine and, and, uh, and drinking alcohol and, and merrymaking and uh, all kinds of interesting stuff. Uh, you can go back to any good reference book and just, uh, as a matter of fact, I think I've got footnotes. And that's something I want to tell everybody on all the boxes, all the materials and things you're reading, there are almost always footnotes. Hit the button that says footnote and it will take you to... Uh, reference works on that subject. You can do research on it yourself. Well, here's an example. They, lo I mean, the Nazis didn't invent wearing the skull and crossbones. They'd done that in the Teutonic Knights for That's right. uh, close to a thousand years. Why do they worship the symbol of the skull and crossbones, normally missing the bottom mandible? Well, yeah, you know, there's all kinds of reasons that have been given. Uh, skull and crossbones, as you said, it was used by the Knights of the Caribbean of the. Uh, the Knights of Malta and some of the Masonic orders that were European Roman Masonic orders that we call Pirates of the Caribbean. That's why the pirates always had the what is called the Jolly Roger or the black flag. You know, the black was always the Saturnian color. It represented death. And so the black flag with the skull and crossbones was the symbol for what, uh, what we call the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, the Pirates of the Caribbean were the old Knights Templars who uh, not only did business all over the world on the oceans, but they even stole from uh, governments and private investors and, and you know different ships uh, on the high seas. They would they would raid these ships, and um, that makes their their carcass even uh, bigger. You know they're making a lot of money. They're doing it with business, or they'll just rob you. One of the two, and they're still doing that all over the world. The bankers are still robbing the people, ripping them off, putting it in the banks and using the same symbols that they've always used, the way they've always done it. So, uh, you know, it's, it's the, the more we change, the more we stay the same. The, the same stuff that's been going on for a thousand years still going on today. And, uh, but now they've, they've made it into a real business now. A lot of the things I talk about, especially in relation to what we're talking about now, the occult societies, there's a, an excellent book, which you cannot find anywhere, it, uh, since it's no longer printed. Uh, it's no longer being sold anywhere, and you can't even find it. And if you do, it's going to be 500 to $1,000 a copy. But I've looked for it, and I can't find it. I have an e-book e on my homepage. It's called Occult Theocracy. 
which is all of the secret societies, fraternal orders, all the ancient cults of the world, 